parks. We're just cutting, right? Yeah, we'll just cut shit up. Yeah. All, All right. right. Cool. All right, I'll see you in a little Later, bit. Early. All right. Philly on and off my whole life. I was born in South Jersey. I first moved to Philly when I was 17. Then I moved to uh, Florida. And in Florida, it's a really nice climate. So I got really into building uh, custom bicycles. It's kind of, I, I always like, like to tinker with things. I always like to, uh, I always like to build things, take things apart, put things back together. Yeah, I mean, I'll just, I just like hunting. I love hunting parts. I was always ripping apart shit around my uh, my parents' house, CD players, to see how the motors work, things like that. And then after I lived in Florida, I moved to California, and that's where I learned, uh, well, it was really hard to ride bikes in California. I lived in the San Francisco Bay, and bang. San Francisco is super, super hilly. So I went and I bought a cheap, cheap, cheap motorcycle. Uh, it was a 1971 uh, CB500. And, uh, and I gave it a full restore. Then I started getting into Sportsters and back to Philadelphia. The first sports Sportster I ever worked on was a 96 uh, Sportster. Um, then I have this 71 chopper that I built. 1971 XSCH competition hot, and then I have I have a stock uh, fuel ejected sport, so I love it. People talk shit, but it doesn't matter when I'm smoking them on the highway. So my name's Kyle. Uh, I guess I'm a motorcycle enthusiast, a hobbyist. I don't know if I'm a biker per se. I've never really thought of myself as a biker, but I do enjoy, I guess, biker culture and uh, to some extent, biker aesthetic. When I'm not working my real job, I to build and rides Harley Davidson's or I mean anything I can get my hands on as long as it's old and cool I found a shovel head that I like was absolutely in love with. This guy Steve in uh, Norfolk, Virginia area uh, sold it to me two, maybe three years ago. I don't remember how much I paid for it. Um, I think 6000 which is kind of a lot, but I just fell in love with the bike. But uh, after a while, I decided, all right, this isn't it. Uh, I, I really love the look of San Francisco, like uh, choppers, really, like really skinny bikes that you that have high uh, front ends, so you can hop curbs and you can lane split. Because I I learned how to ride. I uh, I learned in California, and it's legal to lane split in California. And uh, I was just obsessed with you know, weaving in between traffic. So I wanted my bike over here in Philadelphia to be the same. Even though it's not legal to lane split here, but I mean, you don't get pulled over for anything in this city. So, <laughs> um, and uh, so uh, me and 
Uh, me and my friend Harry, aka Rich, uh, got the bike in half, and we built the bike there. My friend Johnny helped uh, helped with the the late stage fabrication. I got the, the sissy bar from a guy named Drew down in Florida, North Florida. Uh, freak show fabrication. He makes the uh, old cheetah style sissy bar. Those things, I, I fell in love with those things. Those uh. Any cheetah sissy bar is just beautiful. But uh, I'm just obsessed with 60s style, 60s style, late 60s, early, early 70s club bikes. Uh, and uh, luckily here in uh, Philadelphia, there's a lot of, there's a couple club presences, and then there's also, you know, there's still, there's still tweakers, even though tweakers are kind of a dying breed. There's still tweakers that'll, if you feel, if you're lucky enough and you're patient enough, you'll find a shell head motor for $1,000. So when I started building motorcycles and tinkering with motorcycles, it was more of like a, uh, just a, like a positive outlet for my hands and, and energy, uh, rather than like sitting and sulking, being depressed all the time. Uh, and I just started doing it myself. When I started doing it, I was pretty ignorant of the internet. I didn't have Instagram. Uh, I used shop manuals for everything. When I started building, when I started building Japanese bikes, I used shop manuals for everything. Uh, when I was building uh, Yamahas and Hondas, I was using shop manuals for everything. Um, it wasn't until I moved to Philly and started building Carly's that. My friends around me were like, you, you know, you can go online and read about all this shit. And uh, if you go on Instagram, people will talk to you about it. So, uh, so that's how I met Harry and Rich. And then that's how I met Kyle and Big Twin Al. And, yeah. and uh, I knew Johnny from Punk Rock, but uh, that's how me and Johnny keep in touch. That's how I met Emil and all the guys that... I ride with. So that's how I met. Uh, I met Gabe at a, at a motorcycle event. That's how we find out about motorcycle events in the area, and then we just show up to them. You can show up alone on a bike that you poured your art into. Show up alone. Someone will randomly walk up to you and be like, "What'd you do there? That thing is cool. How'd you do that to your bike?" And then you walk away the next morning with three, four, five different friends no that you didn't have when you showed up. Oh, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's a pretty, pretty amazing thing. Like, uh, it's a bunch of guys talking about cranking their hogs. It's, it's trippy. Me and my friends, we joke no that if I ever had a kid, I would name him Harley Parts Jr. <laughs> so, last words just never ends, but like in a good way. I keep the rubber side down, right? And uh, all bikes are cool. Don't worry about anybody shit on their in, in their style. You know. Uh, Daddy to me.